All right. I want to welcome everybody to week two um, info call for the TLS 21 Day Challenge. And I'm here with my friend, Bambi. Bambi, thank you for joining me. My pleasure, Nancy. Good to be here. So today, what we're going to really talk about is what it takes to get going with the second phase. But before we do that, I want to just remind people of what TLS is. And we like to say that TLS is the most comprehensible and customizable weight loss program ever. And it's a true lifestyle, not a diet. And it focuses on fat loss. So the four components, again, are low glycemic impact eating, improved body composition, supplementation, and education. So, you know, we talked before, Bambi, about the fact, you know, so many times when people want to make progress on their weight loss goals, they focus just on the eating. Would you agree? I would. And then the, then there's the other extreme of people that are just like, oh, I think I can just exercise it off. And, you know, when you're 20, I think that works. But um, you and I are a little over 20. Do you find that it's, you know, a bit more focused on the food part as we get older? I, I think it is. I think um, I love the expression that you have is you can't, what is it? You can't outrun a bad diet. Exactly. Yep. You can't. You can't. I mean, it, it, we, 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 or you can't outrun the fork or there's a lot of different ways to say it. But, you know, the even the people on The Biggest Loser, the, the coaches and stuff for that show, which I'm not a particular fan of, but they talk about the fact that, you know, it's like 70% food and 30% exercise. But that's not to say we don't want to exercise. And the closer we get to our goal, the more important that becomes. And exercise also is really, really good with stress reduction. Um, sleep is also critically important. And people don't really, I think they undervalue the importance of that because when we sleep, that's when our hormones get repaired. So what we're going to do though today is really focus on these phase two guidelines and talk about what you've accomplished in phase one. So phase one was a detox or cleanse. And we really, it was all about getting rid of cravings for sweet, fatty, and salt, salty foods. Um, it's also trying to reset our metabolism, trying to jumpstart our efforts. Uh, we were feeding our body really high quality um, nutrients. We've got vitamins, minerals. We've got some enzymes because we have fresh fruits and vegetables. And it was the first step, you know, in creating our new healthy lifestyle. Phase two is all about fat burning. And I don't know about you, but I'm, I like the idea of getting rid of fat. <laughs> I'll often say maybe that I don't care how much I weigh, but I do care what size jeans I wear. So there you go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so in phase two, we're going to actually accelerate our efforts because it targets fat loss. And what we're going to do is we're going to see that that's, you'll see exactly how we do that. But one of the key features here is we make sure that we eat enough protein. And what, what happens is people will lose incredible inches and pound and, and also fat um, and feel better. And, you know, the scale will also eventually catch up. So this is just, you know, you're going to do your reporting tomorrow for your phase one for your detox. But I wanted to just share some results, typical results, so that people could get an idea of what might happen. And when I say they're typical results, I would say maybe a better word would be their, their usual results because everybody's slightly different. And depending on somebody's weight loss goals, that's going to determine or how much weight they have to lose. That will help to determine what their what their progress was. So these are results from a recent client. Her name's Shelly. And Shelly started with a 40-inch waist. And um, at the end of the detox, she had lost one inch from her waist. She had also lost one inch from her hips and one inch from her bust. And Shelly had lost 11.6 pounds at the end of the first week. And you can kind of sneak a peek there, Bambi, at the end of the third week. That's what she did during the whole 21-day challenge. And wow. uh, I'll show a slide later. Yeah, it's really good, don't you think? I do. But, but look at the difference there on, the on her waist. Let's look at that together. Because during the detox, she lost one inch off her waist. And that's, you know, I would say many people do that. But look at how much she lost off her waist in the second and the third week, which is what we're talking about, phase two. What, why do you think that might happen? Well, because certainly there's more exercise. So that's okay. a lot. I mean, we're not supposed to exercise much in the in the week of detox. Right. So she, some exercise. Certainly she did more exercise. Right. And. Um, hmm. Well, I think, you know, one of the things that um, we talk about is the fact that when you lose one inch off your waist, that's a, equal to about one percent body fat. See, you have an Omron, so you can actually measure yours, Bambi, but many people can't. So from the scientific literature, we use the general guideline that one inch from the waist equals 1% body fat. So that's six inches from her waist. 
demonstrates very clearly the success that she had in the second phase because she lost body fat. Right. Yeah, isn't that amazing? And that's a lot. I mean, she was so amazed. Also, as a coach, I know that it's kind of a clue that she has some significant carbohydrate sensitivity um, or grain intolerance. But the, the bottom line is, is that, you know, we're working through that now and she's identifying things that work for her to help her to accelerate her weight loss. Bottom line, she's super excited. So, you know, at the end of the first week, she was, you know, very happy to have lost more than 10 pounds for sure. But now as it's continuing to progress and she's really targeting that fat loss, um, I always say that TLS is a program that allows us to look better, feel better, have more energy and a nice side effect as we take up less space. And she's <laughs> definitely taking up less space. So as you finish week one, you know, it's an opportunity to recognize that you've lost cravings. Um, I don't think you have a big caffeine dependence, but, you know, obviously you've been without caffeine for this week. So that's good. And you really need to think about if you really are going to add that back in because there are advantages to not consuming it. Um, the, you've removed toxins from your system. And that's, you know, with that seven day cleanse kit, it focuses on that. Uh, we use the hepato cleanse to cleanse your liver. You've got the fiber powder to help ensure that you're cleaning up your, you know, uh, GI tract. And um, you, there's probiotics in there too, which were, you know, helping to replace the good bugs. We've helped to rebalance and optimize your metabolism um, in that first week. And hopefully, you know, reduced your, uh, if you had one, a dependence on sugar and then eliminate foods most likely to cause inflammation. But why don't you tell me in your own words, Bambi, what did you think that you gained during the first week? Um, I, I think for me, it was just a, a great body reset to, um, I, I don't know that I have a dependence on sugar, but I certainly do crave sweet things. So right. I guess that would be, I mean, I, I, I can say no to them, but I really like them. So, um, you know, it's nice to get the sweetness out of the fruit that we've been able to have. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So. I, I don't think we ever completely lose, you know, um, our, our desire or our, you know, uh, the taste buds are always going to be friendly towards sweet, I would say. But <laughs> just like you're saying, you really notice the sweetness in the fruit. But when we're consuming a lot of added sugar, many times we don't appreciate the sweetness of the fruit. And I've even seen people sit there and sprinkle sugar on their strawberries and stuff. Right. And, you know, we don't really need to do that when our taste buds are working correctly. Right. Great. So, um the 21 day challenge checklist is just shown here. So we're going to focus on the right hand side today. Uh, we've got the nutrition shake and I'm going to talk more about those and why they're so important. You would be continuing with the core. And when you got your kit, you got a, a, a bottle that has 30 days worth of core. So even when the 21 day challenge is over, you're still going to have some more core to continue with. Isotonics multivitamin is in the kit. So that's a 30 servings. And then the OPC. Now, the OPC, Bambi, that you purchased in the kit or you received in the kit is just a little 30-serving bottle. And I want to just highlight for people, I know you already know this, but the normal dosage for OPC depends on someone's weight. And if somebody weighs more than 150 pounds, their normal dose would be two teaspoons or two capfuls. Um, and then the loading dose would be even more. It would be double that. Many people just take three teaspoons a day. And so um, that bottle might only last 10 days. So I just want to remind people who are listening in that OPC is a great thing to take and to continue to take all the time. And that now would be a time to speak with your coach about the larger value uh, size, which is 90 servings, because it does help to stabilize your blood sugar. So it's still a good thing to continue with. I'm also going to just point out that in that NutriClean Cleanse Kit, there are two products that sometimes people continue with that you can purchase separately. One is the Hepato Cleanse, and that's great for helping to clean up your liver and um, help us to avoid elevated liver enzymes. Uh, I take some seizure medication. Some uh, prescription meds are liver accumulators. So I love the hepato cleanse for myself for that. And then you had fiber powder in that. And again, the fiber powder also contains probiotics. Um, I like the fiber powder because the average American gets less than 12 grams of fiber a day. And the USDA recommended intake is 25 to 35 grams. So um, it's a great thing just to add, especially if people are not getting in all those eight to 12 cups of um, fruits and veg uh, vegetables each day, excuse me, then the fiber is another way too that you can purchase that. So I just wanted to highlight that. Do you have questions about any of the products except for the shakes, which I'm going to talk about? No, I do. Okay. I, mean, I know you're, you know, you're experienced with these products. 
So I always like to point out that one of our sayings for TLS is that protein and fiber at every meal and snack <laughs> makes losing weight no big deal. And I think people really don't have an appreciation for how much fiber, I mean, how much um, that you need of those two things. So the TLS Nutrition Shake has 18 grams of protein and it has all the essential vitamins and minerals. And then the Fibersol, which is uh, the powder, the form of uh, soluble fiber that is added to the shakes, um, uh, is provides an additional 10 grams of fiber per day. So, you know, the people that were, you were getting the fiber previously with the NutriClean uh, system, with the seven day cleanse kit, with the fiber powder, now you'll be able to get um, fiber from these shakes. So that's a great thing. And then, you know, the shakes also help provide satiety. So I think that's a good thing, but most importantly, they're helping to build muscle. And that's super important because protein, I mean, muscle is what dictates metabolism. And protein also helps us to have healthy leptin levels. When we have elevated uh, body fat on our bodies, leptin actually is inside of our fat cells. And the best way to make an improvement in getting rid of that is to, we want to improve our leptin sensitivity. And so this will help with that. So how much protein do you need? Well, the National Academy of Sports Medicine recommends that you can calculate that. And I've given a couple of examples at the bottom. You basically take your weight and divide by 2.2 to get it in kilograms. And then you multiply by a factor based on your activity level. So um, I'm going to use the examples at the bottom for a, for a woman. Let's use the bottom one first. A woman weighing 160 pounds who is of average activity. And when I say that, I mean that somebody's maybe walking, getting in their, you know, 7,000 to 8,000 steps a day. Um, they're not a runner. They're not a swimmer. They're not you know, an ext a biker, an extreme sports person. So, you know, in your case, Bambi, I would call you an active to very active adult because I know, for example, that you do work out, you do do Pilates, and you and Dan do bike. So your formula, I mean, your factor would be probably 1.8 to 2.0. But in okay. the example below, I'm using 160. I'm dividing by 2.2 to get the kilograms, multiplying the by the active uh, factor of 1.8, and the total is 131 grams of protein per day. Now, a lot of times when we look at the RDA for protein, it's like for men and women, it's like 60 or 80 grams. I mean, it's very low, but nutritional experts agree that it's not, you know, that it's too low. And one of the other challenges there is that those guidelines are just for the general population, not for people who have specific needs. And we've already pointed out that when somebody has, wants to lose weight, it's an advantage to consume more protein from a variety of perspectives, satiety, improving leptin sensitivity, and also helping to build muscle which dictates metabolism. So have you ever done your protein calculator thing, baby? Do you know what your uh, guideline would be? Um, I have done it, but I have forgotten now. Okay. Well, you might just so. do that again. You know, uh, again, it's just your weight divided by 2.2. And I think for you, I would multiply by 1.8, you know, and then that'll give you an, an idea of what's, um, you know, what you would need. Okay. All right. So this is the phase two planner and the phase two planner just highlights what we're going to eat. So, you know, breakfast is going to have water, protein, and vegetables. We're going to also have uh, a snack, which is going to contain protein and a serving of fruit. Um, that snack uh, with the shake, uh, you can just mix the fruit right into the shake. Uh, and it's not a problem if you also want to throw in a handful of spinach, Bambi, and get in an extra serving of veg veggies there during the snack. Lunch is going to be our water, good fat, protein, and vegetables. And again, we're going to have another snack with the shake. And then dinner is water, good fat, protein, and vegetables. So what have you gained? You're probably wondering, like, this, Nance, this looks a lot like what I did during detox. What you've gained is a third serving of protein for, for your lunch because you were having it at breakfast and dinner. And you've gained two more servings of protein during your snack, which is pretty awesome. So, you know, I, I feel like uh, it's going to be really balanced. I know that it's going to get you the great results that you deserve. You're going to continue with the same supplements. You're going to still not have dairy. You're not going to have any grains or starches. We're still staying away from the alcohol. And then you're going to go ahead and do your 150 minutes of exercise each week, um, you know, for your good cardiovascular health. So do you have questions about just the general principles of this, of the program here? Well, <clears throat> excuse me. The other thing that I noticed is that the servings of fruit go down. Yes. Okay. So the reason that the servings of fruit go down is because, you know, um, even though fruits are healthy, they do contain fructose and it's what we call a slow release carb. So it shouldn't spike your blood sugar, 
but we still want to limit the amount that you're having during the day. So we're, we believe that, you know, um, you're going to have fine satiety with just having the one serving of fruit per day. Now, a question I often get, Bambi, is do I have to eat my fruit in the morning with my snack? And the answer is no, but you do want to consume it with protein or with fiber. So you do want to have it like with a meal, and that's why it can also be combined with a shake. We're not suggesting, as you can see here, that in the middle of the afternoon, you sit down and eat an apple, okay? We're going to have the, the fruit with the protein because it's going to help blunt the gly glycemic impact. The things that blunt the glycemic impact are protein, fat, and fiber. So that's why it's combined. So, you know, we're also increasing your vegetables. Everybody always notices that the fruit goes down, but they don't notice that the veggies go up. <laughs> So you do get eight to 12 servings of vegetables. And let's say you wanted to continue having your delicious detox vegetable soup. You definitely can continue to do that and add it in, for example, with your lunch. I don't ever want somebody to worry about too, eating too many servings of healthy veggies. Does that make sense? That does make sense. Okay, good. And um, so let's go on and look at the vegetables. It's the same vegetable list that you had from before. Once in a while, Bambi, somebody will find a veggie that's not on here that they want to try. You know, we can look up the glycemic index or the glycemic load for different foods. And we're not going to get into a detailed discussion of what all that is. Um, but you can find the information out there to know if something is low glycemic or not. But uh, you know that you can always reach out to me and uh, just text me or whatever, or call me, and I will certainly help you if there's something else that you'd like to explore. But there's a pretty good list here, I think. What do you feel? No, yeah, I think it's a great list. In fact, um, just last night, I tried a new veggie for me. I'd never had it before. Well, I'd never cooked it before. I've probably had it, but I, I cooked bok choy in a stir fry. Oh. Mm. It's well, delicious, it good. I think. Yeah. 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 And it's a great source of fiber. It's kind of a cabbage-like kind of thing for those people that might not know. I love it. And, uh, and it's tender. It's kind of, you know, it's not quite the same as cabbage. I like it in that way. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's keep going. Um, the fruits are listed here. Now, sometimes I get a question about like, why not mango and why not watermelon? And I did mention it on last week's call, but we definitely, you know, those things are high in sugar. And once in a while, people say to me, why aren't strawberries on there? And I just want to direct everyone's attention over to column one, where they're under berries. So, you know, sometimes we get really focused and we're looking for one particular thing. Just read through the whole list and make sure, you know, that it's not there. It might be hiding somewhere else. Just going to remind people again about, you know, dried fruit. The raisins, you get two tablespoons. That's it. Um, and that's because when we take a fruit and dry it, it concentrates the sugar essentially. So, you know, and people tend to consume more. So we want to make sure you keep that in mind. Now, under protein at the bottom, there's a lot of good news here because women now get four to six ounces with each meal and two to three ounces with snacks. And the guys who are um, doing the program with us this time you all get six to eight ounces of protein with breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and two to three ounces with snacks. Sometimes my guys have a difficult time during the detox week. And sometimes we have to add in a little bit of extra clean protein um, just because uh, they're just not used to it. They have a higher muscle mass than women do. And sometimes it's just a little bit difficult for them to get by on the lesser amount. I do want to also highlight here that there's some things that have a yellow star next to them. And those are protein sources which are allowed only now in phase two. And that would include tempeh, TVP, which is texturized vegetable protein. And if you're not familiar with that, I encourage you to Google it um, and learn a little bit more about it. It comes in a bag. It's kind of, um, you could use it, for example, if, as a filler if you were making meatloaves. You could put it like into crab cakes if you were making uh, like a healthy version of a crab cake. You can just, you know, mix it up. There's suggestions on the actual menu, uh, I mean, on the bag. Uh, and some menus. So check that out. And then there's veggie or garden burgers. And also, of course, the TLS Nutrition Shake. All of these things are available only to you in phase two. So I want you to feel good about the fact we're giving you some new things, Bambi. <laughs> I do feel good. Uh, good. So I know you're uh, very familiar with the tracking sheet. Um, I want to just, you know, say that you are one of, um, one of the kind of people that a coach dreams about coaching because you're extremely focused. You're very committed to your wellness goals, and you're also um, follow through with your tracking. And I just want to remind people that it's so important to share the sheet with a coach because people who do that lose twice as much weight. And I want to remind you that the coach, it's not about me 
fussing at you for eating something wrong or whatever. It's about me providing encouragement, um, suggestions, and helping you to stay on track with your goals. Um, a lot of times people just miss one thing. And if nobody's looking at your sheet, you don't even know that you've missed it. Uh, sometimes people undervalue the importance of drinking the water or getting the sleep. So it's not just about the food that you're putting in your mouth um, so, or the supplements. So the tracking sheet, it looks very similar to last week, Bambi, but it's just got the additional protein and stuff on it. But I'm going to just um, use your uh, tracking sheet from last week as an example. Uh, and I appreciate your allowing me to do that. Uh, I did. I just want everyone to know I did check with Bambi in advance. <laughs> so this was during detox week, but you know, um, you're going to just get a sense of how she eats. So on the first day for breakfast, she had pineapple and she had a veggie scramble with um, of eggs with chia seeds and um, served it over spinach. She had an apple as her snack. For lunch, she had a half of an avocado, some detox soup, and then also a salad. One of the things I see is many times people will just have soup or they'll have salad. It's great to have both. Uh, for her snack, she had carrots and green beans. And then for dinner, she had... Um, the uh, a zucchini boat, which is stuffed um, with chicken, and it's got asparagus, and then she made a cauliflower mash. So you, um, you know, the pictures speak for themselves on on this food. But you can tell that even though this was a detox thing, and I really want to reinforce this, it doesn't. I don't look at this log and think, oh my gosh, this person's on a diet. Okay. Now the next day, um, you know, you can see the examples there. She switched up her fruit, which is good. Um, she uh, has changed up her lunch a little bit, uh, but dinner is the main thing. She had a stuffed portobello mushroom that was stuffed with turkey, onion, green peppers, um, and homemade, uh, what's it say, ma'am? I can't read that. Salsa. Salsa, salsa. right. Organ uh, oregano, uh, basil, and olive oil. And then she had green beans and cauliflower mash. So, you know, if somebody's missing uh, potatoes or rice, then the cauliflower mash can be used as either kind of like a grain, it look, make it look like rice, or you can use it as, um, you know, uh, to make a mash, like a mashed potatoes. Everything that you ate during the detox, Bambi, you can still have, you know, for the phase two. Of course, at lunchtime, you would have had to add protein. And for your snacks now, you'll be adding the shakes. But everything right. you ate was fine and it's delicious. And I want these guys to see what that portobello <laughs> mushroom looked like. You sent that, you posted it on Facebook and I was like, I am driving to her house. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just like to point something out for, yeah. for most of the, the dinner meals for this week of detox, my husband has eaten the same thing. And so his plate looked a little bit different. I think maybe he cooked himself a sweet potato and didn't have any cauliflower mash, but he had a portobello mushroom and green beans too. And he didn't feel deprived at all. Exactly. And can you comment about the flavored vinegar that you use? Oh, I have a collection of flavored vinegars. I'm trying to remember which one I used. I think I, that one was a lemon flavored vinegar. And um, one flavored vinegar I use often on salads is uh, I just get it at the local grocery store and it's a raspberry flavored vinegar. Mm -hmm. I think this, I have a few others. Um, I have another. Um, I don't know, it's a heavy balsamic and this lemon flavored and then one that is um, cranberry pear. Oh, that flavored. sounds really good. Yeah, I I do not do not buy that locally, but um, right. but I, I had this collection of, of flavored vinegars that, that are delicious anytime, but are especially helpful so I don't feel deprived during this time of um, detoxing or, you know, the rest of the the, um, the next two weeks because it's something that I'm used to and it's really delicious. Well, and I, I, mean, I just think it's so important that people realize that this is not a diet in the traditional sense of eating a little bit. Sometimes I get logs and people are eating like, Nancy, I had celery, carrots and, you know, cucumbers. I'm like, I mean, you can eat really well. And this is just a great example because like you said, Bambi, this would be a great meal at any time. It happens that it met the criteria for detox too, but it's a lovely meal and it's plenty of food. So that's one of the great things. People do not need to be hungry on this program or feel deprived. Right. So in, the, in phase two, I just want to highlight that the key change is in the addition of more protein. Women are getting four to six ounces and men get six to eight and everyone gets two to three ounces with their snacks. And again, the shake is recommended for the snack. Um, but sometimes people need to switch that up. We want you to feel like, you know, you can be flexible. Um, exercise is key. 
something that you, you know, like is important. So if you don't like to run, then I don't suggest that you take up running. I do, however, suggest that you try to find something maybe that involves a group, whether it's going to the gym or taking a class. Uh, I really, I'll tell my story quickly. I was not intended ever in life to be a runner. I went into a store, uh, a running store to buy shoes. They asked me if I wanted cross trainers or running shoes. And I said, <laughs> look at me. I definitely want cross trainers. And they said, you need to come to our Couch to 5K class and just hear more about it. And I was told them I was the kid that couldn't run a mile in high school. I didn't think so. And then the next Monday, I found myself there. And the rest is history because we met a lovely group of people. We all run to, and train together. Some people walk, some people do intervals, some people run. Uh, but literally that one thing changed my life. And it changed my husband's because um, he needed to find a great activity too. Um, he wanted to maintain his cardiovascular health and we've just had a great time with it. So try something, even if you don't think you'll like it, at least, you know, uh, it's worth checking out. Sleep is really critical, you guys. And the length of time is not the only issue. It's the quality of the sleep. So again, I recommend the fitness trackers because they will show, um, you know, many of them monitor your restlessness while you're sleeping. And that's an important thing to know. If you never get into the deeper REM sleep, you know, then you're not going to have all of the advantages. So I really want to make sure that you, that you understand the importance of it. Uh, things that can help you with sleep. Um, the isotonics magnesium is excellent for that. You need calcium for muscle to contract and magnesium to relax. And so you may want to talk to your coach about that. Our calcium is also good. There's a reason grandma gave you warm milk before bed. Um, and our calcium does contain magnesium as well. So, you know, you could go with either of those. Uh, we also have a, another product called Prime Dreams, but I really only use that if somebody's having really difficult time getting quality sleep, doing all the right things like turning off the lights before you know you go to bed, making sure there's not extra light in your bedroom. If you need blackout drapes or shades, do that. Um, you shouldn't be watching television 15 minutes before you go to bed. Um, you really do need a chance to be able to wind down a little bit. So, you know, computer and TV are not your friend, like, you know, right before you're going to sleep. So, you know, again, I encourage you to do some exploration, do some reading and find out some tips, some additional tips that will help you get the sleep you deserve. I just wanted to show you that, you know, one of the things many people don't know is that TLS is part of a division. It's a division of a larger company called shop.com. And we have partnerships with many different stores. And so in this particular case, I'm just showing you um, Sears. And I was looking for myself for a Fitbit Alta tracker. I want to change my tracker. You can see that they're $129.95 there. But um, this thing called, pops up and shows me that I'm going to earn 2% cash back. Because of my affiliation with shop.com, I get a deal from Sears. And they're also going to give me $5 off orders of $50 or more. So I'll take that. That sounds good. And then um, I also uh, can go to a store called Raise, and Raise sells gift cards at a discount. So in this case, I looked at the third uh, one here, um, I, I, fourth one, excuse me, and I see that I can pay $102.80 for a $110 gift card. So with the Fitbit Alta, I get $129.95. I save 2% cash back from Sears. I save 2% cash back when I buy um, the, the uh, card at Raise, and I save $7.20 on the Raise card. And actually, I will also get the $5 off from Sears, too. My net cost is going to be $117.55. So it's saving 10%. And it's just a matter of clicking, and they send you an email with the voucher, and then you can make your purchase. So get with your coach if you'd like to understand that, because there's so many things that are available to us to help to support our healthy lifestyle. Um, Safeway is a partner, so you can even order your groceries and then arrange for pickup. Uh, there's Balance by Bistro, who makes meals. Um, it's the, they're already pre-made. They're restaurant quality meals. They send them to you uh, freeze them, frozen and under dry ice. And then there's Chef, where they send you the ingredients and you make the meals. But then look at all the other things. I mean, if you if you belong to 24-hour fitness, they're a partner. You can get a discount. I wear Hoka shoes. They're uh, one a partner. There's Under Armour, Reebok, Athleta. And so, you know, all of them <laughs> are available. And then there's, of course, just things like Kohl's and Sears and Pennies and all of them you can get savings. So the key is for you to know that you can support your healthy lifestyle and save money. So these are some of the recipes for phase two that are provided through the TLS uh, program. One is an egg white muffin. We've talked about, you know, putting your favorite veggies in the bottom of a muffin tin and, and then pouring eggs or egg whites. You can make some power pancakes using the nutrition shake. Have you ever tried those, Bambi? 
I haven't, but actually I was looking ahead at some of the recipes for this phase of our program, and I wondered, um, is that not too much protein if you've got the two eggs plus the nutrition shake? That's okay? You're going to be using that nutrition shake, Bambi, in that particular instance. You would not be having, say, your morning shake with your, with your uh, snack. Oh, okay. You, you just, so you don't you have protein then breakfast and then have your two eggs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Makes sense? It, right. But then what would I have for a snack? Then you're going to have a, a you can just have just a, a you know, like either veggies or you can have a small amount of, of protein. So, you know, um, okay. you, you, anything that you would choose, you know, that you've been okay. normally having. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, and then um, you're going to have, there's a, the option for a Spanish chicken breakfast. And this is pretty good. People don't think about that, but it's basically kind of like a, you can either do it as like a stir, you know, mixed stir, uh, vegetable stir fry kind of thing with the egg, or you can um, uh, in, just have it as it is. So you don't have to add egg to this. It's just chicken, green peppers, onions, mushrooms, spinach, and salsa. So it's just something different. It's almost like, um, you know, a Spanish dish. And then there you can have... Um, an egg white veggie bake, which is just another version of it where they used asparagus instead and broccoli. So there's a lot that you can do. These are just some lunch and dinner recipes. I'm not going to read through them, but you know, obviously your coach should make these available to you um, because this is one of the keys to success. Um, you can also find this information on the tlsslim.com site. So I found some interesting recipes that I thought you might be interested in, Bambi, and I hopefully other people will be too. There's a paleo chicken tortilla soup, which is absolutely delicious. And that comes from Linda Wagner. You can just Google her name. And then also some baked zucchini chips. And you might be like, that looks like cheese on there, but it's not because we're not having any dairy during face. <laughs> Instead, it's it's like a papri paprika. And then you can put some other herbs on there. You can put oregano or whatever else you like. They are really delicious and they do satisfy my desire, you know, to have like a, you know, kind of a chip kind of, you know, snack. Yeah, they look good. Yeah, they're really good. So let's talk about um, McDonald's shamrock shakes. Don't you think that would be a fun thing to discuss? <laughs> yeah, it's getting to be that time, I think. Exactly. And so you maybe have seen the ad. So um, the McCafe shamrock shake, um, which is a, a tradition this time of year, uh, I wanted to just share some information about it because. You know, I know you've got a couple of grandkids and they might be in the mood for a shake or might be asking you about this. Um, so I wanted you just to see like what the nutritional information was for this shake. So this is the medium size and you can see it's 580 calories, which, you know, we don't really count calories, uh, but that's, I mean, that's quite a bit for a, a liquid beverage from my perspective. But let's take a look at the sugars. There are 80 grams of sugar. So there's Yikes. four grams of sugar in a teaspoon. So basically that shake, Bambi, has 20 teaspoons of sugar in it. Isn't hmm. that amazing? It is. It kind of turns my stomach. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, I love the way that, I mean, you know, I understand that people like it, but it's so easy to make a healthier version of it. We will give them credit for the 12 grams of protein, but that's about all I can give them credit for. <laughs> I can't really wrap my brain around something that's got trans fat in it. Why would I choose to have a shake that's got add, you know, trans fat, which is unhealthy? Um, right. It's got a decent amount of cholesterol in it, which we really don't need, you know, added. Um, and then the, the saturated fat is is quite high on that. So, you know, I, the whole thing is just kind of disgusting. The total fat is 16 grams, which is like a lot. But I think the 20, the 20 teaspoons of sugar is by far the most uh, offensive thing. So, right. you know, I always talk about with TLS, we have to find new favorites. So you can make the same shake, Bambi, and you can use do that by using two scoops of the TLS vanilla nutrition shake. You would add just two drops of the mint extract. You would add one handful of spinach. And, you know, that's just really to make it green because you won't even really taste it. And then, of course, your cold water and your ice cubes, and then just mix it up in your food processor or blender or whatever. And it really does taste good. You know, the, the minty parts coming, obviously, from the mint extract. You already know that the vanilla shakes are delicious and rich and thick and, you know, very tasty. So this is the healthier version. And this is what I would encourage people to try. And certainly, if you have kids at home, um, this is a much healthier version for them as well. So, you know, we've talked about success strategies like planning your meals and shopping in advance and making sure you have recipes on board. You do a great job with different recipes, Bambi, and you've highlighted for the people like cauliflower rice, 
Um, zoodles are very popular, which are zucchini noodles. Um, spaghetti squash is a great option. I always encourage people, no matter what what they're doing, whether it's the 21 day challenge or just wanting to be healthy eating, please, you know, bring home those veggies, get them washed, get them portioned out so that they are ready to go and make sure you have snacks available. And I always tell people to buy organic as it's appropriate. I really focus on the dirty dozen and I encourage people to learn about that and the 15 clean. And I always think it's important to have chicken breasts cooked and frozen so that you have something you can throw in the oven or in the microwave. I think um, everything that people need is uh, in the TLS 21 day challenge kit, but other supplements can obviously be added to advance your efforts. Now that you guys are into phase two, you know, if you know that stress is an issue, you might want to add X. If you really want to um, work on uh, improving your body shape and getting rid of excess fat, then CLA is a great thing to add. Um, you know, so there's different options. And, you know, the coach is available with that info and then can also provide some accountability and encouragement. And the journal guide has really good info. Um, and, you know, Bambi, that we have the support group. So um, people can, you know, if, if you're part of my my uh, my cl clients, then obviously I support you online. But everybody can visit Savvy Selections, Dr. Nancy, because that's my fan page for my business. And there's tons of great information there and recipes. So I'll just remind you that it takes 21 days to start to form a habit. One of the things you've talked about in the past, Bambi, is that, you know, we can do this. And then the question is, what makes us continue to do it? Why is it that every once in a while we have to kind of, you know, refocus and restart our efforts? And the bottom line is that life gets in the way. The most important thing is to have something like TLS where you can come back to it. It's a very versatile program with different menu plans. It's okay for people to periodically detox. There's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, uh, over time, as we do things, they say that it takes five or six times for things to stick with people. So people, you know, don't be, if, if you've done this before and you're repeating it and you're listening to this, um, I don't want you to be disappointed because it's fine. You're, you're here and you've got the necessary tools and info to make progress right now. And as you keep at it and stick with it, then you're going to find that over time it's going to stick and it's going to become a habit. And that's really what we want. So uh, we like people to stay in touch and I look forward to your tracking sheets. Um, please make sure, Bambi, that you um, send, share with me tomorrow your weight and your waist measurement. You can share all your measurements if you like, but the waist, again, is great for me because it's a good indicator of body fat loss and where you are. And um, I always like to know if you've incorporated any new healthy lifestyle habits. So did anything kind of you know happen during the, the detox week that you want to share that has been a good change for you? Um, I, I've, I've tried to really focus so much more on my water consumption mm -hmm. and what's interesting is it it's a it's a lot of water to consume it is but i find that the more i drink the more thirsty i feel sort of just in general no but that's actually a really important point so thanks for bringing that up a lot of people are like i'm not thirsty i don't need to drink but once you start to do it then you will find that just like you're saying, Bambi, that your body actually craves it. So most people are slightly dehydrated. And I, when I do a training, I'll say to people, just pinch the skin on the back of your hand. And you know, this is real, not real scientific, but it just gives people a general indication. If it stays, when you let go of it, if it stays in a little ridge, then you're a little bit dehydrated. And one of the reasons that the hydration is so important is that many times when people think they're hungry, they're actually slightly dehydrated. <laughs> And another important piece is that the water is necessary to flush the toxins from your system. And as our bodies are releasing fat, we want to be able to get rid of the waste from that. So it's great in a way that you're, you know, that you made that focus. And it's also actually good news that it makes you slightly more thirsty because it'll make it easier to keep up that habit. So good job. Right. Do you have any questions for me at this point? I don't. I you the questions that I had written down you covered in your presentation, so I don't have any additional ones. Well, I want to thank you for joining us. I hope everybody is um, having a good time with their TLS twenty one day challenge and looking forward to phase two. Bambi, I'll look forward to getting your info by text tomorrow morning. Thank you so much for joining us this evening.